Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you all here in person and also everyone virtually. Certainly great to be able to be back uh, doing this type of presentation in person. Um, my name is Jorge Ramiro Monroy. I am the CEO of Reina Silver. We are a silver exploration company. Our assets are in Mexico and the US. And the premise of our company is around two assets that were part of Max Silver's original IPO in 2003. We did a deal with Max Silver in 2018. And as part of that deal, Peter McGaw, who is the founder of Max Silver, became our chief technical advisor, as well as Max Silver is our largest shareholder. The premises of the company is very much in line with the thinking and approach to exploration that Peter has pursued over his career, which is looking for high quality silver assets that have high grade potential as well as district scale. So on the basis of, of uh, two assets from Max Silver, Gigi and Batopilas, we went public last year in 2020, June 2020. We have 14 million in the bank, uh, strong institutional support about 20% of our shares are in the hands of institutions, sorry, 40% and 17% of the companies owned by management. We have four projects. <clears throat> Gigi and Batopilas are the two projects that we're actively exploring right now. As a matter of fact, at Gigi, we just completed the first 12,000 meters of drilling. This is a project that was uh, Peter McGaw's doctoral thesis. We completed stage one of exploration about 10 days ago, and we will be re uh, releasing the results soon, uh, within this month, as soon as we have all the assays back from the, from the lab. And then at Batopilas, which is a high-grade former producer, we initiated last uh, June a 10,000-meter drill campaign. We have completed the first 3,000 meters, and last week, we put a press release uh, speaking about the first um, 1,000 meters. And I wanted to, um, since we just put this news out, I wanted to start the presentation talking a little bit about our drill results there. We encounter a 3.2 meter uh, drill result that has 703 grams per ton silver with three grams per ton gold. So roughly speaking, about 900 um, grams per ton silver. And within that, as you can see in the, in the core, there is a, um, a visible native silver uh, vein that's grading about 10,000 grams per ton uh, silver. This is a very significant um, drill hole for us. Native silver, I wanted to show you what uh, native silver looks like. These are native silver samples from our trenching campaign this spring where we were able to found, find two new vein extensions to the historic veins. Um, this is the, the, Cobri, the, the Cobriza vein that goes for well over uh, two kilometers of extensions from the, um, from the drilling that we, from, from, the, from the historic uh, veins. And what's interesting about about this is, you know, we were finding this in, in, in vein stack extensions that, that were not previously known. And it's uh, very encouraging to find native silver uh, in just our second drill hole. And I'll be speaking about the significance of this a little bit further on. But I also wanted to highlight uh, another significant result from our drill campaign, which is um, in the spring we had uncovered a gold vein in the district. This is the first time that gold has been encountered in the district. We had a, roughly speaking, half a kilometer vein called the Teodoro vein, which had gold as high as 28 grams per ton at surface, and a number of high grade uh, gold samples on, again, a newly discovered vein. And then in just the second hole that we drilled, we had 1.5 meters of 4.8 grams per ton gold with 10 grams per ton silver, as well as a native gold that's uh, visible in the core, um, grading 21, 28 
Grand Spreton Gold. It's again a, a, a veinlet. So to give you a little more context on Batopilas, I wanted to let you know a little bit about the, the history of the project. This is a former producer. It's a mine that produced 300 million ounces of silver. And during, it's, it's a unique, uh, uh, it was a unique mine as well because it's one of the only mines in the world that has native silver. Native silver, this is what it looks like. That's a, a, a piece that's in a private collection that came from the district. Actually, on my way from Beaver Creek to, to, to Colorado Springs, where we are right now, we uh, stopped at the, at the um, uh, National Hall of Fame and Mining Museum, and they had some beautiful uh, pieces from Batopilas as well. So incredibly well, known uh, district in its day. The average grade of production when this was in production was 1.5 kilos per ton. However, during the sort of the last few years of production, when, when this was uh, in production in, in an industrialized way, they were producing uh, as high as 20 kilos per ton, if you can imagine that. And what happens with these kind of uh, deposits is that the native silver, the old timers would chase them, so similar to the, to the veins that we find in our core, and then they open up into, into these mineralized bodies that can be as, as wide as, as one or two meters. So, you know, incredibly rich um, uh, former producer. This is what a one month's production looked like in 1906. And in about the mid 90s, Peter McGaw, uh, with a group of geologists, staked the old mine, as well as put together the entire district claim by claim. And Batupilas was then one of the three original properties that Max Silver went public with. Max Silver did limited exploration on this property. However, they did get to do some drilling that validated the historic grades. You know, they had um, uh, put a couple of highlights in this presentation, 1.7 meters of uh, 2.5 kilos per ton with native silver in the intersect of uh, 19 kilos per ton. And, um, you know, they really focused more on the area where the old timers had finished mining. And so when we took the, the property as Reina Silver, we wanted to focus on the upper part of the system which had never been explored. And so earlier this year, we had a very successful exploration campaign where through trenching and sampling, we uncovered multiple vein extensions to the historic veins. Uh, they go to about 2.5 kilometers. Uh, this first vein, these first two veins are uh, native silver. And um, as I said, over the, you know, from the trenches, we had native silver at surface as high as 42 kilos per ton. And then in the gold vein, uh, which is here, is the, the Teodoro vein, we, you know, again, had um, very high gold values. So on the back of this exploration campaign, we designed a 10,000 meter drill campaign, which we started in June. We've done 3,000 meters so far. And the drill results that I showed you represent the first 1,000 meter, which is essentially the first seven holes. So, you know, we're quite pleased to have had uh, this uh, high grade silver. Really, this first uh, stage of exploration at Batopilas is focusing on, on, on just looking at the size of the district. And what we're seeing right now is incredibly encouraging. Again, having the presence of native silver in a part of the district that, was, uh, not, that had never been drilled or even explored as comprehensively as we have today. So that's Batopilas. I will now like to talk to you about Gigi. Gigi is um, a project that sits right at the heart of Mexico's largest carbonate replacement system. This project is actually a project that was uh, Peter Magas' doctoral thesis. Um, Peter actually lived at this mine, the, uh, sorry, at this mine, the, which is the, the Potosi mine, uh, while he was a student, and very quickly realized that there was something unique about this system. Uh, this is a system that produced half a billion ounces of silver, where the average grade of the silver was 310 grams per ton silver with 15% lead zinc combined. 
that's obviously very high tonnage, very high grade, you know, coming primarily from these two mines, which are just a mere few hundred meters away from where we're drilling right now. And what Peter noticed about the district that, that he thought was uh, surprising was the fact that while it's the largest CRD system in the whole uh, country, the SCARN part of the system had never been found. And that is what we're trying to accomplish with our drilling program. We're looking for, um, for all, this, uh, all the signs, you know, which you know, there's a large number of indicators that point towards the sor source of the, of the whole district being in the area that we're drilling now. To give you a sense of size, the half a billion ounces of silver that have been produced on, uh, have come primarily from the two mines to our east and west. Uh, as I said, half a billion ounces of silver. So in, traditionally in these type of, of deposits around North America, the SCARN would contain the largest amount of mineralization. So we are looking for a, for a very large silver target we have about uh, 4,000 hectares, so we're confident we control the whole district. What we're looking for is the intrusive, which is um, what the SCARN is wrapped around. And on the basis of uh, you know, a very sophisticated set of geophysics, on the basis of uh, detailed mapping and comprehensive sampling uh, of the district over the last uh, two years since we've had the property, we designed a 12,000 meter drill campaign. You can see the locations of, of the drill holes here. And what we've done is put essentially 12 deep drill holes, each of them to about a kilometer in depth at an angle, really trying to intersect as much information as we can. And as I was mentioning, the key for us is to be able to find the, the intrusive, the fell site rock. That's you know, the, the biggest indication that we're zeroing in on the on the SCARN mineralization. And you know, again, the potential is there for finding something that could be quite meaningful. We, as I mentioned, we completed the first 12,000 meters about 10 days ago. We're waiting for the final assays. When we have received those final assays, we will be putting the whole drill program out to the market in a press release. I expect that that will be in the next few weeks, certainly within this month. And then in the meantime, we have already started stage two. And for stage two, we have an initial budget of 10,000 meters. We have kept the two drills uh, running. We started with the next uh, set of holes and we expect that we can complete the next 10,000 meters between now and, and Christmas. So essentially, uh, you know, when you're looking at our company, uh, and why you should invest in our company. You know, we have a world-class team of technical advisors. Obviously, Peter McGaw, one of the most successful silver exploration geologists over the last 20 years. We also have Doug Kerwin in our technical advisory board. He was the former VP of exploration of Ivanhoe, one of our original investors. And um, you know, he was a, a key, he, he took a, a key part on the team that made the discovery at Oyu Tolgoi. In terms of our, our, uh, the rest of our team, Peter Jones, who is a former CEO of the Hud Bay Minerals, is our chairman. And then we have a group of geologists that have experience working for Max Silver, Pan American Silver, um, Newmont, and most importantly, is a team of geologists that have been working uh, with Peter McGaw as a team for the past, uh, well, in some cases, some of them uh, for over 25 years. So very experienced, uh, Rene Ramirez, who you see here in the picture, um, has uh, you know been uh, with every single drill hole that Max Silver did uh, during their discovery, and so we have a very strong team on the ground. We have uh, 14 million dollars in the bank, as I mentioned. We have institutional investors. You can see some of the names here in the presentation, and um, we do have coverage as well from from Red Cloud. You know, we do have, uh, we do consider our company still undervalued. We, and we have the potential for a uh, significant re-rating from drilling success. The catalyst for the company over the next 12 months, as I mentioned, 
uh, the, the 12,000 meters that will be released uh, in, the, in the coming weeks. At Batopilas, we just uh, did our first 1,000 meters uh, press release. We've completed 3,000 meters. And what we're expecting is every, every few weeks, as, as assays are available, we'll, we'll make them public between now and, and, uh, and uh, the rest of, and at the end of the year. We do have two more projects, uh, Medicine Springs in Nevada. This is another CRD target. And La Reina, which is an epithermal project in Mexico, we are uh, advancing our drill targets at both these uh, properties. So that's our presentation. Thank you for, um, for your attention. And uh, I don't know if, if it's, it's uh, time for questions. I'd be happy to take any questions. I don't know if my mic, I think my mic is working. Is there any questions in the audience? That's correct. So but, but, uh, assays are coming from, that's correct. That's correct. So, so the, the question is, is if the assays are coming for, for, for both projects, and that is correct. At, um, at Gigi, we, you know, we have most of them. We're just waiting for the last few hundred meters of the first 12,000 meter program. And at Batopilas, we're uh, receiving them on, on a rolling basis. Yes. <clears throat> That's correct. So the, the question is, so was Peter McGaw in Mexico during, during the, this uh, drilling uh, program? So, so yes, P Peter was there both um, you know, during the time where we were generating the, the targets and then during the time where we did the drilling. And, and since you mentioned that, you know, we did, uh, while Peter visited the projects, we did what we're calling a virtual site visit. Uh, those videos are available both on our website and our YouTube page. And um, you know, if, if anybody wants to sort of do the second stage of uh, understanding the company, I would highly recommend that you look at those videos. Um, but you know, I, I think this question comes up a lot as well on, on Peter's time. His commitment with the company is about 15% of his time. The, what it looks like in, in real life is you know, one or two hours a day where he has a call with the geologist to go over what they've been uh, working on, um, you know, on that day. Uh, obviously, he knows the district really well, having mapped it uh, by hand as a student. And um, and you know, over the last uh, you know the last couple of years, has been there maybe two or three times, uh, you know, to to personally oversee uh, the projects. You know, as I mentioned, I think this is a project that he's very passionate about. Um, I, I don't know; a lot of people um, might know this already, but you know, the model for exploration for CRDs really came out of of Peter's doctoral thesis on this project. You know, CRDs, of course, have been known for hundreds of years. However, you know, Peter came up with a geological model to explore this kind of deposits that's proven very successful, not just for Max Silver, but for multiple CRD discoveries in North America, uh, some with Peter's involvement and, and some without. But, um, but yeah. George, quickly before yes. we wrap up, uh, could you just talk a little bit about how access to the property? I know 12 months ago, everyone yep. was having trouble, but have you noticed access to, you know, your technical team getting on onto the ground yep. and, and access getting better? Yeah, absolutely. So at Gigi, we have a very unique situation, which is we are about uh, 25 minutes from the city of Chihuahua. So all our geologists, uh, you know, COVID, no COVID, they just go home and then go to the field, and, and there, we've never had a problem. And then at Batopilas, you know, it did have restricted access um, because it's, a, you know, close to a community. Um, but, you know, we've been accessing it since October 2020. And, you know, r really in Mexico, as you might have heard from many other companies, especially in Chihuahua where we're operating, things are pretty much back to normal. Um, I mean, COVID is still a situation, but, but um, you know, the two things that, had become problematic, which were permits and drill assays. Uh, I would say since about June of this year have really become uh, uh, normalized. So receiving the, the assays uh, without a, a huge delay. Initially, the, the delay was quite significant. Now that the times have been um, shorter. And then in terms of access, there hasn't been any, any problem. Terrific.
Well, I'd like to thank George for opening presentation here this morning in this session. Thank you very much. No, thank you for giving us an opportunity to present and thank you everyone. Thanks, George.